Please welcome to the stage, Donnie Burkholz. Oh, thank you, Amanda. That was fantastic. And I think it really brought home that idea of, of you know, think global, act local, right? Wherever your local is and tying everything that we're doing here in the open database community to open source as a whole um, and how that ecosystem continues to evolve and needs to modernize, right? And that modernization is important, especially for a lot of the open source projects that have been around for decades. Um, how do you keep that moving forward? How do you make it accessible to um, the new developers, the new DBAs, the new SREs who are entering our community today? Um, so I'm gonna talk about products. Um, many of you may not know me because I've spent most of my life, most of my career in the developer ecosystem, um, working at companies like Redmuck, working on open source projects like Gentoo Linux. Uh, in fact, I just uh, looked up as Amanda was talking, my first open source contribution was almost 20 years ago today. I wish it were exactly 20 years because it'd be a little bit cooler. But it was more than 19, it was on April 9th, 2003, and it was a forums post. And, and thanks to the engagement from the community that I got as a result of that, um, it snowballed into me spending more than a decade of my life working on open source software um, on the side as a volunteer, which eventually turned into the long-term career that I've now spent. Um, so I spent a long time in and around these spaces. I'm spending this uh, just telling you about this so that you get to know me a little bit and you get to know that uh, even though my title has product in it, I'm not the business person in a suit. Um, I'm coming from the community and I care about making the community sustainable and building sustainable businesses around it. Uh, and so I'm gonna start out by just painting a picture of uh, the future as, as I see it, uh, which there's three main components of this. Um, the first is, is that it's connected, right? There is no being completely disconnected anymore. Everything is getting only more and more connected, um, which makes some things more important like the GDPR, for example. If everything is connected and everybody's data is everywhere, then respecting privacy, having good guardrails in place only becomes more and more important. Um, it also means integration becomes more important. Everything has to tie together. When you think about what a typical enterprise's environment looks like, it's complicated. There's not only one technology stack, there's probably five, 10, 20 or more. There's not only one database, there's not only one cloud. Things run in multiple clouds, they run on premises, they run in multiple different technology stacks. Um, they're hybrid cloud, whatever that means, um, right? The point is it's complicated, things are running everywhere. Um, and everything connects together as well between software and services. You can't succeed with just software alone, you can't succeed with just services alone. You need everything together to help a customer succeed with trying to implement, um, in our case, databases and data platforms. Um, second, the future is intelligent. Um, now, I don't want you to think when I say this that it's the same tired trope you always hear, which is that AI and machine learning is the future and we should all go um, jump on some kind of deep learning course. Um, no, this is about all the different types of intelligence. All right, it's about bringing together the expertise, the intelligence that's inside all of your heads how do you make that visible and transparent? How do you make that accessible to everybody you're working with? Um, and how do you connect that to software as well? Um, you know, what happens so often is that that intelligence inside one person's head, the best DBA at their company, it walks away with them when they transfer to a new role, when they change to a new job, it's all gone. All that implicit knowledge, all that tribal knowledge inside of their head about their company is gone. The same is true for communities. Sometimes you have community leaders who just understand how things are supposed to work, all the cultural mores and standards, right? The, the old guard, if you will, who there's principles that have never been written down in a community, um, and yet they're true. And you have these people who have been around for decades who enforce those principles and say, this is how we work here. Uh, but in many cases, it's never been written down. And that intelligence is really important to write down, share, so it's not lost. Um, and, then, and it is about automation as well. Uh, of helping make our systems more intelligent so that they stop people from doing the wrong thing by accident. How do you help things uh, not go wrong consistently, especially as we get uh, bigger and bigger scale, right? Data's never getting smaller. Database environments are never getting less complicated. They're only getting more complicated, more hybrid, more diverse. Um, and we need more and more automation to help us succeed in those environments. Because um, there's always a corner case that's gonna slip through somehow. There's configuration drift that's happening. Uh, there's somebody jumps into a server during an incident, makes a change, uh, that change never gets replicated, never gets scaled out, uh, and it's, it's lost or it's maintained, and that's, that one is always different forever. 
Um, so how can we take advantage of more and more automation to help us do the right thing um, and focus our time on creating new value rather than our time on uh, responding to tickets? All right, I uh, spent a few years at an enterprise myself uh, walking in the footsteps of all the customers that the vendors are trying to sell to you, and for those of you who are end users, uh, making sure that I understand your pain points. And what it felt like was uh, just constant toil, just trying to keep up, right? There's always pressure to decrease budgets, cut your costs year after year if you're in an IT department, uh, and at the same time, you're being overwhelmed with these tickets. So how can you take advantage of more and more intelligence to keep up? Um, and finally, the future is open. That's why we're all here, right? It's open source. Um, it's keeping that openness real in a way that matters. How do you have open source not just be a marketing term, but be something that is true, that is real, that is authentic, where you can pick up open source software um, and you can use it in a, in a helpful way. You don't have to go pay to get value. You get value out of that freely available version of it. You can go grab it from GitHub, download it, install it, and it's giving you something useful. It's not giving you something where you try it and then you just feel that pain of, ah, now I have to go pay. Um, it's, it's open standards, right, of how do you have things that work together consistently at scale? Um, it's using standards. Uh, in, in our case, uh, you, know, you might call SQL a standard. Uh, it says it's a standard. It doesn't always work consistently across different environments, but it is the, the lingua franca of databases. Right? Every time there's a new database that emerges, at some point they almost inevitably go back and add SQL. Um, because tying into what Amanda said about how developers are influencing technology choices, this means that the barriers to entry are more important than ever. Um, and open is one of the biggest ways we get there. How do you make it as easy as possible for people to adopt new technologies? Because if developers are the influencers, if they are the kingmakers, as my old colleagues at Redmonk would say, um, they're going to go whatever way is easiest. And if we make it too hard for them to go the approved way, the default way, um, they're going to find another answer. Now we've been talking about the future, but what about today? Um, you know, it's, it's great to have these visions of where we could go, and yet today we're so stuck. Um, the problems in many cases remain the same as they have been for decades in a slightly different form. Right? It's things like performance and availability. Like uh, Charity Majors at, at Honeycomb, who I've known for a long time, says, you know, it doesn't matter where your database is running or who's running it for you, you still own the performance and availability for your application. You don't get to outsource that. Your customers, your company's customers, do not care. Um, if you say, oh, we've got a supplier who's running that for us, they don't care. They're gonna leave you because you chose the supplier, you created that trust in them, um, and they expect you to hold that trust up. Um, it's security and compliance. It's, it's an ongoing battle, um, one that is thankfully starting to modernize because we've got better tools for automation and continuous compliance than we used to. We don't now have you know, the team in checklists who shows up once a year, once a quarter to do your PCI audits. Um, it's getting more and more efficient and doing so in a way that helps you scale more effectively um, and, and dealing with those increasing demands for self-service. Um, and if, if you're not hearing those demands, um, chances are that's because your developer teams have already bypassed you. Um, they're already in the cloud doing self-service on something else and you're just not hearing about it anymore. Um, because those developer teams are looking for and expecting self-service, they're looking for ways to move faster and you're looking for ways to give it to them. Um, but ways that don't give you more and more work. Um, our 2020 survey showed exactly that. The problems are the same as they have been, right? It's availability, it's performance, it's incident response, um, it's security, it's dealing with all those issues continue to be the biggest pain points. Um, and so we need to continue to take action to make those easier. Now, everybody here um, is from the broader open database community, and everybody has a different view on approaching that problem. Um, our view has been, as, as Peter said, has been a, a 15 year long experiment now in staying fully open, doing everything we can to take open source as an experiment and say that is going to be the way we approach this. Uh, we're gonna be the champions. Um, and so we've had our great services business built around this for a long time. And we've also had open source software that uh, we kept everything open source all the way throughout. And now we're bringing that together into something we call Percona Platform. Um, this unifies the software and services to run your database experience in any infrastructure. And so when we think about what we're trying to do here, we've had services for a long time, we've had software for a long time. Software has been super popular. I'm gonna show you some of the numbers later on. Uh, but we've never really brought that together. 
Um, we, we think we have some of the best experts in the world. Um, I'm happy to have a discussion about that with any of you afterwards. Uh, we think we have some of the best experts in the world in all of the databases we support. Um, and we're applying that expertise more and more, not only to the services, but to our software, we're bringing all of that together into that holistic solution to help customers get what they're looking for. Um, I'm gonna show you uh, in a little bit uh, a couple of demos of this. So you've been in an hour of keynotes now, you might be getting a little bit tired, you might be running out of coffee. Uh, we're gonna show you some real working software just to keep things interesting. Uh, and if the internet works, the demo will work, otherwise you get to watch a video. So when we think about what we're trying to accomplish, what we're trying to give to customers with Vercona Platform, um, it's about giving them control and visibility. Um, because when you have uh, developer teams that are looking for self-service, the first thing that might be running through your head is like, oh, that's gonna go off the rails. Um, you know, they're gonna do crazy stuff, the environment's gonna fall over, they're gonna use up all the resources, they're just gonna start up instances that are gonna keep running, they're gonna never shut them down, it's gonna be a big old disaster. They're gonna do things that aren't secure, um, and so, what do you need to do to give them the right guardrails to succeed, but do so in a way that doesn't have to involve you every step of the way? Um, and do so in a way that for your production environments um, gives you overall visibility consistently across your databases, across your environments, from cloud to cloud to cloud to on-prem, um, and lets you see and manage those consistently. Um, and secondly, it's about that simplicity, right? Because I mean, let's face it, all you know, databases are super complicated. Complicated to configure, complicated to manage, complicated to monitor. Um, the more we can do to bring that together into one place, the better. Uh, the more we can keep people from having to jump across fragmented tool sets, the better it's gonna get. I mean, and finally, it's about enabling developers to move faster. And we do so through giving them a database platform that lets them move quickly while DBAs or SRE teams provide that platform to them. All right, and this is really that mindset shift. How do we change the culture and how do we use technology to make some of that real? Um, we give our developer teams platforms, uh, we maintain that platform, we provide them with a self-service experience, we provide them with enablement, support, and training, um, and then those development teams can go, they can run, right? They've got everything they need to succeed. They don't need to start filing another 27 tickets the next time they're looking for a new database server. Um, so we've brought together the things that make Percona great, the things that people love us for, um, all in one place. The open source software and the tools. Uh, we brought the expertise. Um, we brought self-service content, which um, many of you who, if you haven't been a customer of Percona, we have a great knowledge base available for customers. Um, it's only getting more and more popular, getting more and more um, articles in it. We've got close to a thousand articles in there now, so there's a lot of problem solving. Um, and, and what I find, I'm right on the cusp of being a millennial myself, um, and I know that at least for me, I hate talking on the phone with anybody ever. If there's anything I can possibly do to avoid interacting with a human on the other end of my commercial relationship, I will absolutely do it. Um, I will change my vendor choices if one of them requires me to talk to a human and the other one I can just go buy it. Um, and, and many people are exactly like that. Um, so they're looking for ways to do as much self-service as possible, take advantage of, of what you might call level zero support to just go solve as many issues as they can and then go to the experts when they really need to, when they need customized advice, something that's unique about their environment that's hard to solve um, themselves. And, and finally, something that is, is new to Percona Platform. So we're bringing together the best of what we've sold, the best of what we've always given away in open source software, and something new. Um, and what we're bringing new is these automated insights. So we talked about the power of intelligence to change the way we work. Um, automated insights are the first way that we've taken at Percona to help with that. Uh, and Barrett, our Director of Solutions Engineering, is going to show you a demo pretty soon here on what that looks like in practice. Um, so when I, when I joined Percona, I saw this great opportunity, um, and they had seen it too, in how can we take advantage of that software and pull it together into something um, really holistic and make, make that more of a product offering. Now, in the past 12 months, uh, we have seen 75 million downloads of Percona's open source software. It's a massive, massive number. And what's really interesting about this number too, just that reflects some of the comments earlier about Kubernetes is about three quarters of those downloads were from Docker Hub. They're containers, right? People are using containerized databases, containerized database monitoring so much that you have to make sure that, uh, you know, somebody's doing that at your company. 
Um, and if it's not you, then you wanna figure out how do you get visibility into that? How do you start enabling them? Um, and how do you tie that into your broader data strategy? Um, or it's gonna continue to happen without you. Because um, there's a lot of people using containerized databases right now, whether you know it or not. Um, they're making decisions about which database they're going to use, whether you know it or not. Um, they're doing so in a self-service way. And now, even today, um, two-thirds of our support customers have chosen to run um, the Percona stack. All right? It's not been a, pro a part of our product at all. They've used it because they love it. They've used it because um, it, it works better for their needs. And of our managed services customers, um, all of them use PMM because that's how we run it, so that's not a very interesting stat to share. Uh, but 58% of them have also chosen to run the Percona database. Um, this is just great support for um, you know, the value that we're trying to bring to people to take that expertise that people have known Percona for um, and translate that into software as well. And here's a few quotes um, from some of our customers who just really love Percona software today. I'm not gonna read through all of them, I'm just gonna give you a minute to browse through them. Um, these are just some examples. Um, of course, I wish I could share uh, all the examples that aren't public. Right? Peter showed a slide earlier on talking about um, some of the, the customers across different industries that we have, and this is one thing that, uh, when I joined Percona, I was, uh, I was amazed by the customer list we have. I wish I could share it all, but when you talk about nine of the top 10 tech companies coming to Percona for our expertise, that's something that is um, so flattering. It feels just, it feels really amazing to me. Uh, and this is a little bit of a hum humble brag, but I'm gonna go with it anyways, uh, because it just was such, it was a shock to me. Because I knew Percona for their expertise, but I didn't realize how much it meant to people who are leading the forefront of innovation in the tech industry as well. Um, so what does this platform look like? I've been waving my hands around for a while talking about this Percona platform thing. Um, what is it? Um, in our case, I'm gonna walk through this uh, top to bottom fairly quickly. Uh, and I encourage you to come to our full-length session uh, that'll be running tomorrow if you wanna learn more about it. Um, we've got PMM, which really we see as the heart of the platform. It ties everything together. Um, it's got both monitoring components. Um, one of the most loved part of that is something called query analytics, or Quan, uh, which gives people a great way to really dive in and identify the most problematic queries that are running. Uh, it's one of the reasons uh, that, that people run PMM today. Uh, we've got advisory insights that are new. These are these automated insights. You're gonna hear a lot more about those in a couple of minutes from Barrett. Um, and then it's also got a management, which we've been making a lot of investments over the past couple of years to improve our management capabilities. Bringing you things like um, graphical backup and restore, which we're gonna GA fairly soon here, um, and inventory, private DBAS, which you're gonna hear more about in a little bit. And we've got the database distributions, which is not just the database server, but really everything you need to succeed packaged up in one place. Uh, Percona Extra Backup is one of our most popular pieces of software. Uh, people use it regardless of which vendor they're using their database from, because it just works really well. Um, similar is true for Percona Backup for MongoDB, um, which we've got some really nice additions for. Hopefully you make it to a session if you're a Mongo person here. Um, and then we, and we make sure that all these database distributions include the backup, include what you need for high availability, what you need for security and audit logging, so that all of that is available open source. Um, and we just had a, a roadshow event uh, a week or two ago in Sweden, where one of our customers went on stage, created their own matrix of decision making, and showed just item by item why they had chosen to run Percona software, and every one of those was because we had been publishing features, we had been publishing enterprise features in the open. Finally, we've got Kubernetes operators. Um, we've got operators for all of these databases. They're all GA. People have been running them very successfully in production. Um, and uh, we invested a little bit early, I think, for stateful databases on, on Kubernetes. Uh, that was a place where people were not ready when we started working on it. We invested ahead of the curve, and fortunately, that community has continued to grow, that momentum has continued to grow, and that's really reinforced uh, the investments that we've made in it. Now I'm gonna bring up our director of solutions engineering, Barrett Chambers, to show you more about advisors. Cool. Thanks, Donnie. Is it working? I saw, saw a tech guy come over here. Live demos. Um, hi, everyone. I am uh, Barrett Chambers. I am the director of solutions engineering at Percona. Um, my team speaks to customers and potential customers about solutions software. Um, okay. I swear we tested this before, guys. But that's technology.
Anyway, I was excited about the advisors portion because even if you're a customer already running our software, PMM, whatever, this will be relatively new um, to you. And it's a value add on top of you know, what Donnie was talking about, people already know and love for Percona, which is our people, more or less, um, in addition to that software. Still no. <laughs> no, you didn't. Okay. All right, so the advisors have uh, three tiers. So everybody gets the um, anonymous tier of advisors. So that means I have PMM in my environment. I don't wanna connect it to the portal. You still get advisors. Um, we also have a registered tier of advisors. So that means you have it connected to Percona portal. You're running PMM. Um, so you'll get another set of advisors. Um, the third set of advisors is the paid tier, so that is only Percona subscribers, so you have a subscription to the Percona platform. Um, the idea is that at the free level, you're getting um, kind of one-dimensional um, advisors, but they're still important, obviously, around like security, version control, that type of thing, so you can more proactively address problems within your environment. Um, so an example of that would be like checking um, for CVEs against Mongo. Um, you'll get a nice little dashboard and your PMM homepage that lists the critical um, warning and then notice level advisors. And when you drill down on that, you can see the full list. Um, and then you can drill down again and it takes you to a troubleshooting page. So exactly like Donnie was talking about kind of wanting to do a little bit of self-service, you can kind of go all the way through that. Um, at the registered and paid level, um, we're taking kind of the power of our people internally and putting that into proactive advisors. So these are gonna be like second and third dimensional where we're taking into account what's running on the server and providing proactive advice on troubleshooting and resolving issues um, before they become issues in production. Um, this is, I would say this is a common request from pretty much everybody I speak to. I've been at Percona for six years now, had over like, I don't know, 3,000 conversations um, around open source technology. Um, and pretty much all of them want a more proactive approach to um, database management. So this is essentially our, our step into that direction. Yeah, it's not, it's not gonna work. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do it live. <laughs> all right. We're gonna see if it runs on mine. I can turn this around and do it. Right. Look at a laptop screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Look real close, look real nice and close. <laughs> Oh, yours is working. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Maybe I should have used this dongle. I have a USB C. Should we try that? If you want. Yeah, yeah let's, let's All try right, that. we'll try yours and see if you got USB C. <laughs> this is how you know it's live. If it's not a tech issue, it is not a live demo. <laughs> Guaranteed. He's running Windows over here, isn't he? Yeah. He, I was, I was gonna make a comment when it came up. Yeah, you, you thought that might be Ubuntu or something? No, it's Windows. Go, go ask it's Peter Windows. Zaitsev what operating system he right. uses for work. I'm, I'm gonna do this on mine, or you're gonna do this on mine. All right, I've got for you here a PMM instance that I just started up from Docker Hub. Do you have a portal account? It is not logged into anything. I do have a portal account. Is it in our sandbox? Watch this, it is. Then I can do it. Uh, right. It is a Mac, though. You might have to stand by. That's right. <laughs> we got tech support on standby here. <laughs> all right, this is this is how we, what we call servant leadership. 
So I was in a um, tutorial yesterday and somebody asked, where are the buttons? Right. There's no buttons because we were in the terminal setting up things. So I have plenty of buttons in this demo, so. All right. So you got PMM, you got uh, portals in the next tab over to the right. You have like a billion tabs. I do. It's it? in the next, you're, you're on the second to last one and then one more. <laughs> All right. This was not the demo laptop, so this is my, that's this just is, my normal web browsing. This is how browsing. Donnie works. It's like. That's my normal web browsing. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so this is the, the portal portion. So if you can remember the, the architecture slide before, this is the top portion, the new portion. Um, if you do have a subscription, you'll see your tickets here. So that's what I'm showing there. You can also see your account information in the top over here, um, as well as your Percona contact, so who you interact with. Um, you will need to um, form an organization when you first log in, or if you already have one, you'll be added to an organization by your admin. Um, and what we'll need to connect our PMM to the portal, um, which is what I'm about to do, um, is over here in our profile. We need a Percona platform access token, um, and that's what will be on the PMM side. If we go over here um, to Don't update. Don't update. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably out of compliance, Donnie. I might need to update. Uh. All right. Um, let's see. So we go to the home page. We should see the advisor failed checks that I was talking about. Here we go. Um, I'm not sure what's going to show up on this one, Donnie, because we don't have any like we don't have any servers hitting it. But we'll we'll still show it enabling it. Um, yeah, we only have, this is running on the PMM side. If you're familiar with the PMM architecture, we're using Postgres as like a, a config store. So um, anyway, to set up advisors, go into your settings and um, advanced settings. This is like a prerequisite here. Um, we need to get IP address from the browser just so the portal can recognize our um, our PMM instance. So we're going to apply those changes. And then we'll go to this platform section over here. Um, actually, one sec, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop around. So we're gonna look at advisor checks right now. So um, we have the basic ones. So this is what I was talking about where it's checking like CVE, um, uh, CVE upgrades that are available to fix CVEs or uh, bad authentication or versioning. Um, these are the free tier of advisors that everyone would get. So before we connect to Portal, I wanted to show that. So we've got around, it looks like around 10 advisors. Um, let's go over here. Um, and we'll go grab our secret token over here, copy to clipboard. We'll just call this for uh, live test. Uh, caps lock, I switched them. Caps lock? Caps lock V, yeah. <laughs> That's where control is supposed to be on a real keyboard. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, successfully connected. So if we go into portal now, we should see our new PMM instance. There we go, we've got our Percona Live test. Um, and another feature of the portal is you can see we have like five PMM instances running. If you've got like regionally isolated deployments and you want different PMMs for that so that no data is leaving that section, you can do that here, and it's much easier to manage because you can see the full list from here. But um, we're going to go back to uh, our PMM instance, and we should see um, a lot more advisors now. If I go to the advisors section, um, here we go. Yeah, so we've got we've got a, a lot of advisors here. So, um, and you'll see that we have a lot more robust advisors, like we've got a Postgres cache hit ratio. So each of your Postgres servers, um, if you're not getting 90% cache hits, you'll get a little warning message. And that's a key to go like investigate um, what's going on. And we do have like, uh, as Donnie was talking about, knowledge base articles specifically to address these deeper level um, um, warnings that you get. Um, and I don't, I don't think we'll get any hits on here, but I'll, I'll try to run them and see if we do. 
um, but super easy to turn on, um, really deep advisors with plans to add more, um, um, to, to give more pro proactive approach to, to management. I don't think any are gonna show up, Johnny, so we can move on. I've already gone way over. Yeah. We, we ship a well-configured database? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Barrett. Yep. Rolling with the punches, man. Appreciate it. All right. See ya. Part of taking high risks is always having a fallback plan. So I'm going to show you a couple more things quick, uh, but I think more exciting is trying to uh, show you a second demo. We're a couple minutes over time, but I think it's worthwhile to stick around because all you got waiting out there is more coffee. In here, you get to see more live demo. Um, so we've already talked about a lot of the reasons why you might want to use Percona Platform. I'm not going to uh, rehash them too much, uh, but really just giving that sense of openness and flexibility, um, because enterprise environments are complicated. You've got to run things in a lot of different places, um, and it's way easier if you don't have that fragmented tool set, but if you can really bring everything together in one unified view. Um, and so, so where are we going? And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this, uh, but I just want to give you a sense of some of the major areas that we're investing in our product going forward. Um, you're going to see a lot of improvements here through um, the end of the year and beyond. Right, you already heard about the insights. Um, Barrett just showed you some examples of those. You saw it's a pretty large set already. Um, those are only growing. We're making ongoing investments there, both in the depth of what we can do today, as well as making those uh, more advanced. Um, we're taking a fresh look at our dashboards um, to make sure they align with the way that modern observability approaches want to troubleshoot. Um, things like the red method, things like the four golden signals, Making sure that the dashboards don't force you to jump all over the place or to be an expert to find what you're looking for, but guide people through um, who might be developers or SREs and maybe not database experts. Uh, we're continuing to invest in management as we discussed. Uh, we're improving a lot of our enterprise readiness, making sure that we're ready to scale out, making sure that we're ready for um, highly regulated environments as well. Um, and finally, uh, we're investing a lot in user experience of making sure that our software uh, is increasingly easy to use. Um, and uh, one, one more thing, just wanted to riff on Steve Jobs a little bit there. Uh, we want to show you a little bit of what we're working on right now, um, bringing up some of the stuff that's in our labs in a tech preview state. Um, and so I want to bring up Steve Hoffman, who's our SVP of engineering, to show you the private DBAS. <laughs> it's a Mac. Is ready if you need it. And I'm on a Mac, so you know it's going to work the first time. Sorry, Barrett. All right. Oh, look at that. Beat me to it. So I got a loud voice to begin with, so I'm going to try and whisper. Um, so I wanted to show you database as a service. I'm not going to go into a whole how to use it and all its bells and whistles, but Donnie mentioned something that's super important to us, and that's the user experience. When we're building these products, we're not just thinking about sort of the end consumer. Well, I guess we are, but, but what we recognize is that there's more than one of them. Um, Everything we talk about right now is developer enablement, so a lot of the features are like, oh, it's for the dev, it's for the dev, make their life easier. But the reality is it's the database administrator or the DBRE or the SRE who are the ones who are drowning in work. And what we're trying to do is create two experiences in one so that everybody's life gets easier. And things that we think about are around you know, how you can give developers access to everything but still retain some control, right? So we talk about making certain versions available to kind of adhere to company policy. Now, your developer, when he goes to create his database, and I'll show that in the next screen, um, feels like they're being given choice, but you're still able to maintain a little bit of control, right? We know this version is no longer in use, and we don't want anybody bringing it up by accident because of compliance reasons or whatever else. Um, we can allow default settings, right? So we can say, you know, what we think are the recommended versions. Beyond that, though, we're going deeper into, and this is more future, but what's on our roadmap is actually um, more administrative controls around role-based access. Right? We know that organizations, uh, multi-tenancy, I've been asked a thousand times here about multi-tenancy, and we're trying to bring those concepts even into this database as a service world where you might want to give your marketing team access to database as a service functionality for getting their new WordPress blog spun up. 
Uh, at the same time, your developers are constantly wanting to stand up new databases to test new software. So um, we have to think about both of those, and so role-based access control was one of, our access, uh, one of our responses to that so that you can get really granular with permissions. And that's gonna unlock a whole bunch of stuff, way beyond just uh, can I add or delete or see a database, but um, limiting the availability of resources. You know, if, Cloud is cheap um, until it's not, and you can really quickly rack up a giant Amazon bill, trust me, ask me how I know, uh, what we wanna be able to do is limit resource consumption, not just to what the available pool is, but maybe your developers are not allowed more than two gigabytes of memory, or you know, maybe your production system, you don't want anybody creating more than 100 gigabytes of memory. I mean, just making those examples up. Um, over on the user side, you know, what we're thinking about is uh, databases are intimidating. I'm doing a keynote tomorrow and I'll talk more about that, so I won't spend a lot of time now, but it needs to be a positive experience. It needs to be literally point and click. Give it a little bit of information. We'll go Mongo this time, all right? And kind of walk them through. Don't, don't make this painful. Don't make it long, cumbersome setup. And then more importantly, when all the setup's done, I'm not gonna click run because you can see uh, my little test instance, I didn't give myself enough resources to create two clusters concurrently. But um, we don't want user, we don't, developers don't wanna spend their time securing the database down. So what we're doing is pre-shipping well-configured databases for you. So I do have advisors running, and uh, if I went over to the advisors tab, I'm not going to, because I think Vadim's here, and he'll make fun of me for running a really old test version of MariaDB, he does it every time. Um, but we've set these up so that they don't have any alerts out of the gate. We know what we're looking for. We're the ones who are creating the database in the first place and giving the advice, so we're making sure that we're solving these problems so that you don't have to go out, get the database set up, or worse, your developer, who's just gonna wing it, get that database set up, and you find out that it's an old version with no defined root password that uh, you know, is, is suboptimally configured without requiring any authentication. So there's so many things that we're looking to add here and just continue to build on top so the roadmap for database as a service, I think Peter said it best, right? Baby steps. This is actually a pretty big foundational step, but from now, we can start running a lot faster and adding these features, and I'm just excited about where that's going. So I'll stop there. If anybody wants to see more, I'm happy to give demos, but I didn't want to turn this into a demo session. Uh, thank you. Did I appreciate stick? it. <laughs> All right. So this felt a little bit more like an Apple commercial than a Percona commercial on that one. <laughs> Hook up the Mac, it just works, it's amazing. Uh, so hopefully you got a taste of what we're doing today, which is bringing the expertise into automated insights um, and where we're going in the future, which is more and more that developer enablement, providing developers with self-service platforms and doing so in ways that take a lot of load off the DBAs and SREs that are on the other side of it. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited about where we're going. Um, if you're anywhere near as excited as I am, or even if you're just curious, um, come and stop by the booth and talk to us a little bit more about it. Um, or we've also got a full-length session that Barrett and I will be presenting, uh, possibly on, on my Mac, uh, tomorrow, where you'll see a little bit more detail about how you can unify your database experience with Percona. Thank you.